I thought the Milwaukee situation with Pat Bev was very, very interesting. They are a very, very interesting team right now. They've got something going on. I think the reason that they bring in, and we need to talk about it for real, for real. Them bringing in Pat Bev, to me, is more about the locker room and what's going on as opposed to him being on the team for play or, you know, whatever the case may be. We haven't talked about it, but Doc Rivers, one in four? Right? Doc Rivers like one in four, maybe two and five since since the the hiring. You know, named named All Star Game uh, head coach though, Eastern Conference All Star Game head coach. Round round of round of applause for Doc what? Rivers. Yeah, yeah. No, that's real, Domo. Yeah. Really? Yes. They sacrificed Adrian Griffin to get Doc Rivers. Who is uh, an All Star uh, coach? An All Star coach. Yeah. That is so, nice. Yeah, and all of them he lost. It. Yeah, oh yeah, that's the other thing too. Thank you, thank you for saying that, uh, Diana Rosen. All of them leads. All of them leads. All his losses, ten plus point leads, and he lost all of them. Um, so I personally think. Well, first of all, do y'all have any thoughts on that? Because I personally think they bought Patrick Beverly in for some locker room reasons. Do y'all have any thoughts on on Pat Bev? Is that dude that's going to play? <laughs> Not meaningful minutes and alls. But he gonna be that dude to play to like set the tone for the teammate. This is what I want to see out of y'all. Now I can't do it. <laughs> I'm Patrick Beverly, you know. At some point, I'm gonna get posted up. I'm gonna get cooked. But I want y'all to try to do shit like this. As I said, there's no way, and I'm a down it. There's no way people look at the roster the same way that the Lakers are viewed at. Now, obviously, they're a better team. There's no way you look at this team and don't think title contender. But here we are. <laughs> here we are. But they're still trolling around. They're still not that good defensively. What? What the fuck going on in Milwaukee, bro? So that's the only reason he's there. I agree. I think he's going to do a bit more than like a UD locker room role thing. He's probably going to get uh, some floor time. But um, in general, nah, I don't expect deep postseason Pat Bev minutes. No, not at all. I actually, in terms of this trade, I agree with you, Omar. It's definitely something for the locker room. I do think this is a case of Pat Bev is going to be needed on the court because they need defense. And I understand Pat Bev might not be who he used to be, but this move shows me they need somebody there just to help play defense the best they can. Pat Bev is still getting there and play. This is like Pat Bev isn't over by any means of the word. He's still getting there, be scrappy, and play some defense. And I'm mad I'm talking this good about Pat Bev for as long as I have. Because y'all know I don't like this little nigga. I hate the little homeless looking nigga. I really do. Um, but I will say for this specifically, Great move, and I, I I think this is a cry for help for Milwaukee because if they're going to be real contenders, defense needs to be addressed. You have Damian Lillard. You're not playing no damn defense with Damian Lillard, so you need somebody there to actually be able to play some defense. I like the move. Um, <laughs> as B. Souls is back, just let's react to this. Ducks Doc is night or four one and four as Bucks head coach, blowing a lead in every uh, L. Nineteen point lead versus the Jazz. Fifteen point lead. Uh, versus Dallas, 13-point lead versus Denver, 7-point lead versus Phoenix. I have the same sentiment with this shit, with every single coaching conversation we've had over the last 12 months, bro. In in a, in a vacuum, like, you got to blame the coach to a certain degree because, you know, they're, they're the one coaching the team and they're not doing their job properly in a vacuum. But at the end of the day, even with, with, with what we said earlier, bro, it boils down to the front office. Like you, you, you threw Doc Rivers into the fire halfway through the season. Um, I'm like, he can't just, I don't know, he can't just instill everything that he wants to instill in that short amount of time span. But still hold him I, accountable, though. But yeah, I'll I tell you, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you, in terms of Doc Rivers, I, if we were talking about any other coach, I would feel you 12 fold and I'll probably have a lot more empathy. But a guy like Doc Rivers, like, I, I can't have that. People don't understand how fucking ass Doc Rivers is. I need y'all to do this. Anybody, anybody. I'll do it. Take the top five, take a starting five lineup from Greg Popovich, Eric Spostra, and Doc Rivers. All the players they coached in their primes and come up with the starting five lineup for them. And when you do that, oh, go, go ahead. No, I was asking. Go ahead. Keep going. I'm saying when you do that and you realize that there are players who are on the top 75 list that are going to be sitting on the bench for that Doc Rivers lineup, you're going to be like, damn, he only has one chip, and he's coached all these players up to this point? That's insane. I, I can't feel bad. For, nah, I, he gets everything 
that comes with when it comes with blame with this team. He was the consultant. He was the nigga whispering in, in Adrian Griffin's ear. Hey, you know what you should do? You should go up there and just let uh Dame shoot 12 threes uh defensively. Don't worry about it. Like that, I think that would work. And Adrian went out there and did that and shit failed and he got fired for it. And now they're just putting the nigga who's been in charge at the forefront this entire time. Like I don't Well, to to I, be I fair, I also have that same like idea with Darvin Ham and you like to blame Darvin Ham. Right again, rightfully so. I I, I I don't want to make it seem like I'm making these coaches seem like good coaches now all of a sudden. But at the end of the day, y'all hired a rookie head coach to coach a team that had championship expectations with LeBron and AD, and you expect him to do that shit year one when he's never been a head coach? Like, I don't know, bro. Let me see. Uh, Ray Allen, Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, Ray John Rondo, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Joel Embiid, James Harden. Giannis Antetokounmpo, God dang. T-Mac. <laughs> yeah, Jason McGrady's on that list. Yeah, I, I was going ever since he started winning 60 games. Pardon me. I didn't say that part. I I, I meant to, yeah, ever since he started winning 60 games. That's where I was going. But, uh, yeah, if we go even further back, you got Tracy McGrady on there as well. Oh, my God. Rondo, Antoine Walker. Um, I just – I just – uh, uh, analogy for the win. <laughs> fast and fucking just t- being a terrible coach. Um, Gary Vitti says that Kobe Bryant refused the wheelchair after tearing his Achilles. Oh, that's not good. He says, I asked him if he wanted a chair. He looked down at me and said, Fuck Paul Pierce. <laughs> I'm sorry, that got me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a child. That got me, bro. Why? No way. That's fake. That's fake. Wait. Bro. No Is that way. real? <laughs> Oh my God, Ben Simmonson! No. I'm sorry. He said, "Fuck Paul Pierce, man." So no I don't way know. that nigga looked at the chair. Fuck <laughs> Paul Pierce, no way, bro. I mean, how do we? How do we? <laughs> I mean, it's stupid for the love of God to get her getting the fucking wheelchair, but fuck Paul Pierce is crazy. I never thought Paul Pierce was so hated until I talked to basketball fans outside of Massachusetts, bro. <laughs> like everyone, hate, everyone else hates Paul Pierce, bro. It's just crazy. Cause we got I Kobe, nigga. That's hard. nah, but no, nah, but that's always been a thing. We always knew that when he tore his Achilles, he did that thing. He go the fuck out that moment. He was, he was been posted from the free throws to walking off, getting back on defense. I, I, I'm not surprised he said fuck that wheelchair and fuck Paul Pierce. Seems like Kobe. Honestly, like I ain't gonna say it's smart, but it seems like it. Fuck, fuck Paul Pierce. Damo, what are you about to say about this one? <laughs> oh, him and uh Jared Allen got into it. They got into a, a scuffle. He done threw Jared Allen on the ground. An actual surprised. fight or like an NBA <laughs> level fight? Like he's playing tonight. Exactly, he's playing tonight. And not only that, he threw Jared Allen to the ground because they got tangled up. And then Jared Allen really got up and was trying to do something. Like not really trying to do something, but he was actually mad. It was actually entertaining to see. Ben ain't played I don't know how many games. He came back on business. I love it. I, I think like hates that. his back, though. I ain't going to lie. Hey, the Bucks <laughs> about to be one and five tonight. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. They are out here getting fondled by Minnesota. Hampton. To be fair, apparently they've been dealing with injuries. Like, Dame's not playing tonight. So. Uh, last basketball thing. <laughs> I'm pretty honest. Is on the list. Oh, I, I want to ask y'all. Do y'all think Bucks front management is good? Yeah, I don't think I don't think anybody that cucks to their player knowing their player makes bad decisions and still cucks to their player is good. If you think look a guy like LeBron Legium is overrated, go for it. I think that he's earned his um share in like, hey, I ain't gonna lie, trust me, I got you. And then other times, no. He's proven the front office wrong and right simultaneously. So LeBron, different entity altogether. But when you have situations like a James Harden, a Daryl Morey, or a Giannis to what they going on in uh, Milwaukee, nah, hell no. I think that's – when you start cucking to your players, uh, especially Brooklyn, I almost forgot my main example. You When you cuck to your players, nah, I don't think you're that good. That's right. 